Hello, Lab Pokemon trainers, and happy holidays! Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coats on back order, and welcome back to our Pokemon Moon playthrough, part number 29. In the last episode, we were at the top of Mount Hokulani at the Hokulani Observatory. We checked out things in there, and it turns out we found our way to the Trial Gate almost immediately, so I wasn't quite ready just yet. I didn't want to jo or jump right in there. I basically want to do some grinding, as I said at the end of the last episode, before taking on the trial. But, as it turned out, between episodes, I did go check out the Wild Pokemon on Route number 10, which is the route sort of basically leading into the trial, and we're already over five levels above the wild Pokemon there, or at least five or over, so I don't want to be over leveled for the challenges to be faced, therefore I'm not going to do any grinding after all, but I'm going to do something before we take on the trial, and you'll see what that is in just a moment, but first of all, let's take a look at the team as they currently sit. I'm going to start with our lowest level Pokemon, Dorothy the Drift Blim at level 33. She is a quiet Pokemon, boosting special attack and dropping speed. Unburden is the ability which says she will get a speed boost if she uses or loses her held item, and she's holding Berry Juice for the moment. Hex, Gust, Thunder Wave, and Minimize is the moveset. Next, we've got Sonata, our fully evolved starter Pokemon from the Kahuna Hala back on Melee Melee Island. He is a quir or, sorry, careful Pokemon, I almost said quirky. He's a careful Pokemon, boosting special defense, dropping special attack. Ability, of course, is Torrent, and Waterium Z is the held item, and he has Sparkling Aria, Aqua Jet, Echoed Voice, and Sing. And as it's been for the past, how many episodes now? Our final team member is Prowl, the Midnight Form of Lycanroc, level 34. She is also a quiet Pokemon, boosting special attack while dropping speed. Keen Eye Ability, preventing accuracy loss, and Rockium Z is the held item. Rock Slide, Bite, Counter, and Stealth Rock is the move set right there. But, you know what? Before we go take on this trial, it is finally time to add a new Pokemon to the team. I've done some exploration off camera, just to sort of get my bearings on certain things here. And as it turns out, one of the teams... Okay, wait. Before I get to saying anything else, see the sparkling green thing here? That's a Zygarde cell. Remember when I saw that when I was talking to Lily, and then I went back here on the next episode and it was nowhere to be seen? One of our regular viewers, Robert Gosney, has pointed out that some of these Zygarde cells are day-specific or night-specific. You can only find them at certain times of the day, so that's why I couldn't find that one before. But now we have it, just out of curiosity. Let's take a look and see how many of those we have. Zygarde cube, we're going to check it. We've got 28. Was I actually right last time I was counting them up? I think I was. Anyway, 28 Zygarde cells. So... What we're going to do, as I said, go add a new Pokemon, and it's actually a Pokemon we can find on route number 10, so why am I walking, wasting everybody's time? I'm going to go flying on in, and I was kind of up in the air what final Pokemon I wanted to get for the team. I knew I wanted something... Watch out for that tree. <laughs> we don't want that Pokemon, but I knew I wanted to get something that would be resistant to rock, because I have, in the overall collection of all my Pokemon through all the generations, rock is one of our biggest weaknesses. And as it turns out, one of the Pokemon I've decided to get... Hey, here's an idea. How about I don't leave with a Pokemon that is Ghost-type against things with, like, Gumshoes that might have Pursuit? That's a pretty good idea, you think? Let's go ahead and switch around into Sonata as the lead Pokemon. Anyway, as I was saying, I want a Pokemon that will be resistant to Rock-type attacks. Oh, wait a minute. Switch with the Y button. There we go. And not something that's going to be, I guess, either neutral or weak to Rock. So, one of the types I wanted to add is a fighting type, and as it turns out, the first fighting type I don't currently have in my collection is found on this route. It's not you, Gumshoes. It's going to be a different one, which you'll see momentarily, and I'm not going to divulge it just yet, but as soon as we do, I'll mention it. But I can talk about some random stuff before we get into this. Although, hang on. Let me continue my thought as far as getting this Pokemon. Once I capture this Pokemon, I am going to go take on the trial, and it might seem to some. Like, I want to try to capture a fourth Pokemon that I can basically switch in as battle fodder. That is not the case whatsoever. I actually want to add this Pokemon now, because once we complete the trial, I'll be adding another couple of Pokemon onto the team, one of which we've already seen before. No, technically we've seen both of them. Come on. Can't run away from a Fero. I will sparkling Aria you till the cows come home, till the milk tank come home, if I have to. I'll try to run one more time. There we go. If you held me in twice, you were going down. But anyways, we'll be able to add some more Pokemon to the team, and I don't want to basically start adding, like, say, three Pokemon immediately after the trial is completed, because it seems like that might be a little bit excessive. Now, come on, tell me that they're in this grass. I know they are. I met one on a different route, and then I checked the Pokedex to see where they appear, and they do appear here. So, I just gotta wait for that Pokemon to show up. 
but as I said, I can talk about a couple things. I do owe an apology to folks out there for two things. First of all, less important, I don't know what the heck was going on with my Santa hat in that last episode. Because as I was watching the editing, or watching the video during editing, you guys probably saw it, right? The hat was way off to the side. The downside with the computer that I have, my uh, processor is not super, super amazing. So in order to get decent-ish quality footage of the games, I actually cannot record with my webcam visible to myself. It still records the footage of the webcam, but I can't watch it as it's happening. So as that hat was veering off to the side, I had no clue. But anyway, hopefully it's going to stay. Look, where is it? There it is. I'm trying to find where the little bobble is at. Hopefully it's going to stay in position better this time. So we're not having any luck in this grass. I'm going to go check out some different grass. But the bigger apology that I do have to make is, of course, the fact that if you follow the channel quite regularly, you'll notice that I missed a couple of videos this week. One of them is, of course, the weekly news update video thingy. Why does that tree look different? You see that? The one that's in the uh, on the right side. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, there's one right there, too. So I missed the news update video thingy. And as regular viewer Unknown Spike pointed out, you know, they, it was quite visible that I noticed, or that I missed it, quite noticeable that I missed it. So I basically haven't had a lot of free time this past week. It is the last week before Christmas. Come on. All right then. Couldn't get away twice. That is it. We're going for the sparkling aria. You know what? We should Z power you, but you don't deserve that. You're not worth that. This should be a knockout. But basically, being the last week before Christmas, there is not a lot of downtime, unfortunately. Uh, YouTubing is still basically my hobby, and real-world, real-life stuff did get in the way this week, unfortunately. But I do want to probably come back and do something special for Christmas itself. Maybe record a special video on that day and upload it. Although, I don't know how many people would really be watching videos on Christmas, because you're going to have all your presents opened up and so many new things to you know make use of, and the excitement is just going to be there. I don't know, maybe I'll hold off until maybe Boxing Day or something. Now come on, show me the Pokemon I'm looking for. I can't ramble forever. This has to be it. This is like our 17th encounter on this one route. Is it even here? I am pretty sure I checked the Pokedex and it showed the Pokemon on this route. If it is not here, I do know where I encountered it. I can go check that other route instead. Which me uh, reminds me, I did some other exploration of er er various other routes surrounding... What is that town called? Kali City, I think we just came from? There's an interesting thing up on the route to the north. Hey, Ledian, how you doing? And I actually saw, I didn't speak to them or anything, or speak to him or anything, but I did see a Lola form Professor Oak, also known as, well, Professor Oak, but he is up there. And I wonder what he has to say. He'll probably give you another Kurt Pokeball if I'm lucky. Which we picked up a number of those. Oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, the last episode. We found a few of the Pokeballs created by Kurt, the apricorn guy, back in Azalea Town in the Johto region, which is pretty cool to see those balls back and usable, too. All right, what is your level? We can escape from you. You're not that fast. Thank you. Let me try one more encounter in this grass, and I'll check out some other grass on the same route where I'm pretty sure the Pokemon I'm looking for will appear. Problem is, whenever I'm adding a main team member to the team, I kind of want to encounter five of them before choosing one, and we're not really finding enough of these Pokemon. We're not even seeing a single one. Get out of my way, Gumshoes. You're not worth my trouble. But, again, I apologize for all the lateness of the videos. I still haven't had time to sit down and check out the comments in the last episode, or the last news update thing, to decide, you know, who gets the code card. I will do that. Fortunately, today, as you're watching this, Thursday is a pretty easy downtime for me, so I have a lot of time to take care of stuff, depending on how quickly I wake up today, because this episode you're watching right now, I am recording technically at midnight on Thursday, and my usual routine, I like to record an episode at 4.30 a.m., middle of the night, on Thursday as well, for the sort of afternoon, daytime kind of thing, video for uh, Friday. <sighs> Where is this Pokemon at? It can't be this rare. You know what? I'm going to give this grass one last chance to show me the Pokemon. Don't keep me locked in, Firo. Thank you. One last chance, and I think there's one section of grass I can check else on this route. 
No, there's not. This is the last chance. If there is not a Pokemon to be found here that I'm looking for, goodbye, Route 10. We're going to a different route. That is not the Pokemon. So, is there anything else that I can talk about as we're wasting so much time here? We're already 11 minutes into the episode. This is a repeat of our Rockruff hunt, isn't it? I'm not interested in repeating that. My goal is... Okay. My goal is to complete this trial today so that I can bring back Pokemon and do a grinding montage between this and the next episode because I gotta get uh, Icona the Sandy Ghast. He is level 16. He's way below the rest of the team. So I gotta get him up to speed. I wanna get the, uh, the new recruit up to speed. Plus, I wanna... You couldn't outrun a Skarmory? You're a Tauros. What is this nonsense? But... I do have to get the new Pokemon trained up, plus Cordial, our Steenie, that was so viciously destroyed by the first Ultra Beast we saw. The first attack used by an Ultra Beast in this playthrough. We lost one of our Pokemon in a one-hit KO. She will be back, and I'm looking forward to training her up and getting her ready for future battles as well. But let us now skip ahead to a different route, which we can access, but I did check this off camera. There is a trial gate that we can't get through just yet. However, I think it was in this patch of grass that I found the Pokemon I'm looking for. There's still some trainers we haven't dealt with. I'm not going to deal with them in this episode, I don't think. I guess there's something else I could mention. I could have... Oh, wait! Wild Picky Pack Evolution. I could have gone ahead and done some training on these trainers here to try to level up for the upcoming trial. But since we're already above five levels, or at least five levels or more above the wild Pokemon on Route 10, doing any trainer battles would kind of over-level us based on what, you know, what level I want to be at. Because I don't want to have like a super easy time with these trials. I don't want to have an impossibly difficult time either. I want to have a nice, hi Paris, a nice even pace. So training up against the wild, not wild trainers, tra training up against the Pokemon trainers in different areas. Yeah, it'd be good for experience, good for cash also, but wouldn't be good for the playthrough. You know, I want to keep things kind of tense and interesting. Like, what was a good tense moment? What was the last trial that we had? Well, it was against Olivia, the Grand Kahuna, on uh, Bacala Island. That wasn't really that bad. So not a pull through all by himself. The one before that, well, the Lurantis of Lush Jungle. That was easy. I used Dorothy for that one. I guess... You know what the hardest one so far was? Yeah, what am I thinking? This should come to mind immediately. Salazzle! Totem Salazzle. What was that trial? That was crazy. But, anyway, we've been having a pretty easy time, and this is the Pokemon in question. I want a fighting type. This is a fighting type. And you're going to be level 26. Now, of course, as I say, I want to get the fifth one. It's a weird, like I said before, I don't want to call it superstition, but it's a super tradition, I guess you can call it. Part of, you know, a little tradition of mine. I'm trying to capture the fifth one because it's like, I guess... The first one you encounter might not be the best one, but then again, there's no guarantee the fifth one will be either. It's just something I like to go with, because you never know. I got five chances, basically, to find a shiny Pokemon of the species I'm looking for. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. Shiny Pokemon. Well, what's your opinion on shiny Pokemon down there? In the, uh, leave the comment or leave a comment in the comments down below. What do you think about shinies? Do you think they're really worth the hype that people make them out to be, or you know, make them out to have, or? Do you see them as just basically regular Pokemon, too? Me, I used to think they were pretty cool. I don't think that they're uncool. I don't, you know, dislike them now, but... I guess all the different ways that shiny Pokemon are now obtainable, better chances to find shiny Pokemon, they lost a little bit of their specialness over time. You know, especially since a lot of the uh, special Pokemon giveaways from Pokemon, the company itself, like... Is it Xerneas and Eveltal, I think? They gave away a shiny version of those two? kind of takes away the specialness, you know? When you can just basically, when everybody can have a shiny Pokemon. Oh, another good example. When uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were first coming out, they had a shiny Metagross, or rather shiny Beldum, I think it was. But basically, you get shiny Metagross as a giveaway. And if everybody has a shiny Metagross, like, how is it? What does Syndrome say in The Incredibles? When everyone's super, no one will be. You know, if every Pokemon is shiny, does it really matter? So, I don't know. That being the case, if I found a shiny, I would still definitely add it to the team as a main team member. 
but we'll have to wait and see what happens as we've encountered a single Pancham thus far. That can't be that rare. Now, I could go ahead and look up on like Serebi.net or Bulba Garden, or sorry, Bulbapedia rather, and see just exactly what the rarity of these Pokemon are. Here's our second one right now, but I still kind of like to be surprised. You know, if I go to that page, for example, to see what Pancham's rarity is. Oh, it's got Mold Breaker. That reminds me. Hopefully the Pokemon, or the fifth one that I find, is going to have the other ability, because Mold Breaker... I'm not really that interested in that. I much rather prefer its other ability, which I did find it when I looked it up some time ago. And it can have... Oh, wait! First time we see a Kamala! I'm pretty sure you're a normal type. We're gonna leave you be. Comatose. Now, exactly what does Comatose even do? You know what? I'm gonna just stay in and see what happens. I think it says it can only be affected by... Wait. Okay, so... Let me try Sing again. I want to see, does Comatose act like uh, Truant? So it can't be affected by Sing. And it can still hit. Okay. That kind of hurt. Let's go ahead and give it an Aqua Jet. I want to hit it with something. And there's a critical. Excellent job, Sonata. Nice. Well, that's quite enough out of you, Kamala. Bye. Let's go ahead and heal up just to be safe. So I guess... What is it? Comatose ability prevents Kamala from being affected by... How does that work again? So apparently Sing didn't work. I thought only sleep could affect it, but maybe only its own sleep can do it. Like if it uses rest or something. I don't know. Interesting. But that's kind of cool. We see two bears here on this route. Would we possibly see a... Ursa ring? Or rather, Teddy Ursa, but... Wouldn't it be interesting if we see that here, too? Now, kind of talking about Alola forms a little bit, I guess. Now, why does it activate the comatose at the start of the fight for? That seems kind of strange. I don't really know that much about comatose, apparently. But maybe I will learn as I go along and deal with Komala later on. But... I wonder if they'll ever put... If, <laughs> what am I trying to say? They'll ever... I don't know how I mix my words up there. But I don't know if they will ever put Alola forms for non-Kanto Pokemon. For all I know, maybe there are some in this game. I just haven't met them yet. But I could easily see Ledian being bug fighting. Because it's got like the Fists of Fury ready to go there. And since we've seen it here, I've always kind of seen Ledian almost like a Mega Man kind of character. Because it looks like it has a Proto Man helmet almost on its head, right? The way its eyes and stuff look. For example, look. I see that. It makes me somewhat think Proto Man, because like the visor that Proto Man has. If you guys don't know about Mega Man, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But trust me, it looks similar to a Mega Man type character. I even designed one of those Mega Man 8-bit uh, sprites one time to look like Ledian, which is kind of cool looking. Alright, so we've got two Pancham down. Can we finally find three more? We don't need Ledian. It's too bad we don't have the Dexnav ability to track down the exact same Pokemon time and time again. But, unfortunately, that has been done away with since Gen 6's completion. What else can we discuss? Well, as I say, I don't want to get this Pancham just for, like, uh, Battle Fodder in the upcoming trial. Because, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. It's Electric type, and I've got two Pokemon weak to... Did you follow me from Route 10? Get out of here, Gumshoes! But I've got two Pokemon weak to Electric, that being our Water-type Sonata and Flying-type Dorothy. Prowl, the Lycanroc, almost said Rock Rough, the Lycanroc is going to be our only way to deal with the Electric Trial. Now, in theory, if I wanted to, if Prowl does take a stat drop from some sort of effective attack, I could want, you know, probably want to switch her out. There's number three. I probably want to switch her out and get her stats back to where they should be. And switching into a Pokemon weak to electric probably wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. But I guess technically I could switch to the fighting type Pancham. I'm not going to do that though. Being the level that the Pokemon will be, I really don't think it's going to survive a hit in a trial. It might, but then I got to switch back into Prowl anyway, so. I don't know. I guess if I have to switch in this upcoming trial, I'll probably switch to Sonata for a couple of reasons. First of all, Sonata has much better defenses than Dorothy does. The other reason is, I think I mentioned this in the last episode at the end, currently Prowl and Sonata are sitting at one injury apiece, whereas Dorothy has two. 
the sort of Nuzlocke-ish style stuff I have set for the rules for this playthrough state that if a Pokemon has gotten three injuries, as indicated by the markings that you can give them in the game, then I can only bring them back from the injury box if and when I complete a Kahuna trial, which is the grand trial on every island, kind of limiting the options of bringing them back. So, Dorothy is one injury away from not being able to come back until a Kahuna trial is completed, whereas, now, I hesitate to use the word expendable, but both uh, Sonata and Dorothy, no sorry, Sonata and Prowl are the most, or the least unexpendable, if you know what I'm trying to say. So this is Pancham number four. One more, we finally get this capture and move on with the story. Something else just came to mind. Once I make this capture, I want to check one last thing out before we fly back up to the top of Mount Hokulani. But, anyway, I'm kind of rambling. I'm excited for this upcoming trial. We'll have to see what happens. I don't know. As I say, Prowl is going to be my main focus to use in this uh, in the trial. I don't know what's going to happen in the trial, what kind of Pokemon we'll have to face, but of course, a trial equals a totem Pokemon. I'm kind of excited to see. Are we going to get to see a Lolan Graveler, or maybe even a Lolan Golem, perhaps? That I kind of hope we don't, because there's not much Prowl can do to it. Ledian, out of the way. Tell If you see Pancham, tell it to come by. We're looking to capture it. What else can I talk about? Well, I suppose I can say, what is today? Technically, when you're watching this, it will be the 22nd. Actually, well, technically, it's also 22nd for me because it's past midnight on Wednesday. But we are only three days away from Christmas. It is this coming Sunday. Is everyone out there excited? I'm excited. We just found our fifth Pancham. Let's make this capture. Now, what ability do you have? Ah, oh, I want an Iron Fist. However... Ability capsules, as far as I know, are still a thing, so we can't make use of that. Let's see if the Aqua Jet knocks you out. We are seven levels above. That does nothing. Vital Throw, we resist that, we're Fairy type. Let's Aqua Jet once again, and then we can go for the Sing Attack. Nice light tap, alright. Another Vital Throw. I'm glad to see that you have Vital Throw, though, because... Actually, you know what? I was going to also mention another thing about capturing the fifth Pokemon. You never know. Oh, you got Slash. But you never know what ability, or not, well, ability, but you never know what kind of nature the Pokemon might have. And I guess it's kind of maybe superstitious-ish. Maybe the fifth nature might be the best. Obviously, that's not true, because when I caught Prowl as a Rock Ruff, she was our fifth encounter, and... <sighs> Land! The Sing Attack! Anyway... When we captured Prowl, she was our fifth encounter. Okay, Sonata, I'm not going to heal you. Oh, wait. Okay, we get to have this fun. I was not expecting that. So, if we wanted, we could capture a Pangora right now. Kind of like the idea of capturing the baby form though, and building up from it. Hmm. Let's just let's just. This hits everybody. Uh. Hmm. What to do? What to do? I'll tell you what we do. We gonna heal up. Okay, I'm in a little bit of a spot here. We have fighting types that are super effective on our rock type Lycanroc. And we have Dark type that is super effective against our Ghost type Drift Limb. That hurt. Huh. I'm gonna have to take this Pangoro down. Let us go with the Echoed Voice. Start powering that up. And Pancham, please don't call for help again. It's gonna take two more of those to bring down this Pangoro. If I can even get. Wait, this throws me out of battle, doesn't it? Oh, boy. Hmm. Well. Let's... I can't risk Prowl going down in this fight. I could rock slide and try for a flinch. I could counter. 
It's not worth the risk, though. I'm gonna have to switch again. We haven't seen any Dark-type attacks. Then again, Pangora could have it, but... Sonata's too weak right now. I'm gonna switch to Dorothy. Hmm. I can Thunder Wave the, the uh, Pancham, at least. As long as we don't get knocked out. Alright, excellent. Go for a pair of Comet Punches. Let's Thunder Wave the Pancham. And hope the Pan... You've dodged four Sing Attacks and a Thunder Wave. Pancham, you're almost not worth adding to my team. Psych, you are. Because if you can dodge all that, I want you in the team. You dodge everything. You don't even have Pokemon Refresh Friendship with me. So, let us now go with the Gust Attack. we got to take down this Pangoro. It is still fighting type. We'll have super effective damage. Nice. One more brings it down. Then we start going for the capture on the Panchan. I'm glad to see you don't have any dark type attacks. That would have been a big concern. Here we are, what, 20 some minutes into the episode, about 25 ish. And we haven't even gotten to the main part of this story yet. I thought I was going to be done the trial at this point. Don't call for help. Thank you. Pokeball. Catch this Pokemon, please. All right, it's paralyzed. It's in the yellow. Not totally weak just yet. Gotcha! Finally! All right, that is that. We can move on with the adventure after we check the Pokedex. Oh, wait, Dorothy needs some care. And everybody was in that fight. I forgot, yeah. All right, Pancham's data added to the Pokedex. Oh, we did see Pangoro there, too. Look at how powerful that thing looks. Why don't you check out what kind of Pokemon? Pancham, the playful Pokemon. There's no point to the leaf in its mouth, aside from an effort to look cool. It's mischievous, so it's not well suited to inexperienced trainers. Wait, is it... It's, okay, I I guess I keep thinking the word is mischievous, but it's mischievous. So it's not well suited to inexperienced trainers. Well, I have completed six Pokemon Leagues in my generation. Generation? In my career. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. But I think I can handle a Pancham. Look how cute, look how cool this thing is with the leaf. Why is it going to be so mean, too? There's no point to the leaf in its mouth. Other than to look cool. That is a point. Like, look at how cool this thing is. All right. So it is a female. We are going to nickname this, of course. I was trying to think long and hard about what kind of a nickname could I give for a Pancham. And I came up with this. I'm going to go with Pandora. Now, if you know the legend of Pandora's box, the whole thing where the box was opened and all the evils of humanity were released and stuff, forget all that. I just like the sound of Pandora as a panda-type Pokemon. Plus, it also fits with the fact that I do want to ability capsule her ability to be Iron Fist, which would mean she would be a pretty good boxer. Pandora boxing? How about that? All right, Pandora added to the party. As I say, we're not going to use her just yet because she is nowhere near the level to match up with the rest of the Pokemon. But she is going to be held in reserve for once we complete this upcoming trial at the top of Mount Hukulani. I will go ahead and train her up, train up Ikana, and the, uh, at that point, recently revived Cordial the Steeny, and get them ready to roll in a grinding montage. I think Ikana is going to need a little bit more training than the rest. Of course, he's only level 16. But hopefully it won't take too long to get everybody up to speed, or at least pretty close. With all that, now out of the way, we're about two-thirds of the way through this episode. It is time to finally jump into this trial against Sophocles, or rather not against Sophocles, but against the Pokemon he has prepared for us. Of course, first things first, we're going to need to heal to get ourselves nice and restored. And I'm just excited to see what is this trial going to hold in store for us. I don't know. Okay, now, the only downside to the fact that we are using a Pancham, of course, if you don't know, Pancham evolves by having another Dark-type in your team when it levels up past a certain level, because then the uh, the Dark-type Pokemon in your party triggers the Bad Influence Evolution TCG reference of Pancham. So, wait, who am I leading with? We're going to need Prowl out in front. Now, we do have the Rockinium Z. Since I have to put everything on Prowl for this trial, I might... Finally, after so many episodes, have to make use of another Z move. We're jumping in. I'm scared. I wanted to check out your room first. Oh, well, 
You're getting close to your goal. I don't know if that's the voice I gave him the first time. Let's just go with this up. I imagine that you must have come here to attempt the trial, huh? So, uh... Do you like Festival Plaza? Yes, I do. I love it. I get so many cool items. I've got a few bottle caps from that. Oh, if that's the case, then. Fine. Whatever. Let's get started. Right here? Right now. Right here. So no matter what I questioned you, you're going to answer that same thing, weren't you? So what is this trial going to be? You summon the Toto Pokemon and prove your strength to it. That's what every trial boils down to, right? So I thought, why not just call the Totem here from the start? That's kind of a lazy way, isn't it? There's not some grand adventure and journey I have to go on. I don't got to gather ingredients and make a decent dish for Mallow or anything. So I tried a bit of this and that, and I think I've whipped up a little device to call the Totem Pokemon. Perhaps you're wondering why I built the machine. Here at the observatory, we also monitor sounds that we detect from outer space. There are some sounds that are inaudible to people, but Pokemon can hear just fine. We broadcast the sounds we have gathered ter terrestrially and monitor the reactions of Pokemon. The machine that summons the totem Pokemon make use of this technology. Utilizing other sounds we have gathered, we have also developed a security system here. That was actually Big Mo's invention. Is that Malayne you're talking about? Just so you know, this will actually be my first time trying it out, so I'm glad you came. I needed a test subject. Friends, help! A guinea pig tricked me! Ping Totem Pokemon 2.0, engage! Make it so. Now the totem should... Uh-oh. Yeah! No way! Did it blow a fuse? Ow! Did the door close? Let's see, we'll need to turn off the security system to get the door open. Oh, this is kind of like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, isn't it? You'll have to pass an audio quiz. Alright, I gotta listen. It, it, it's fine. I definitely feel a powerful presence. It's coming now. The totem Pokemon is coming. So let's get this trial going, okay? My trial is about to begin. Okay, audio quiz. In order to open the door, please respond to the following audio quiz. What sound do you hear? That's healing. Pokemon Center. Yeah. Correct. Opening door. We made it! Grab! Whoa! As soon as the door opened, a Pokemon came through! I'm counting on you, Chaz! That was really it? Oh, wait. This isn't the totem music. This is a standard Pokemon encounter. It's a wild grubbin. That's a bug type. Let's rock slide. Prowl is the right choice for this fight. Level 27. Okay, we are perfectly fine, at least against this thing. Rock slide. What does this even look like? Oh, it looks like Prowl hurls the boulders into the air above her head. That's pretty cool. I knew you could do it, Prowl. Excellent job, girl. All right, that is one encounter down. So as I said, these are like the regular gym battles or the gym trainers in a Pokemon gym, right? The trials are basically just gyms, just with a different kind of a coat of paint over them. I knew you could do it, Chaz. Oh, and just when I said it, the door closed again. It's going to be okay. The total Pokemon is on its way. Detected presence of approaching totem Pokemon. Really? It's coming up from the bottom of the mountain. We gotta hurry up. In order to open the door, please respond to the following audio quiz. You hear this sound when you get what? Rotom? Yeah, Rotom decks. Correct. Opening door. Charge! Whoa, as soon as the door opened, a Pokemon came through. This one's up to you too, Chaz. Okay, this is a charge -a bug. We've heard this. Plus, well, it said charge. Also a bug type. I think it's actually bug electric. I didn't know its eyes glowed like that. That was pretty cool looking. So, the way this is going, I have a suspicion I know what the totem Pokemon is going to be. This is also level 27. All right, I can quite happily deal with that. How defensive are you? Not enough. Charger bug is charge a dug itself a hole. Got him. All right. I knew you could do it, Chaz. Oh, and would you look at that? The door closed again while I was flapping my jaw. Would you stop this? It's it's gonna be okay. The totem Pokemon is on its way. It probably he probably doesn't even know it is. Totem Pokemon still approaching. Cause see, like he's just like he just doesn't want me to walk out yet, you know. Yeah, the door is closed. Sure it is. I can't confirm that. You just don't... You're just lonely. 
The security system has been 50% shut down. In order to open the door, please respond to the following audio quiz. Which Pokemon's cry is this sound? Hang on. That sounds like Charge Bug. That certainly ain't uh, Grubbin. And it's not Puku Muku. Correct, opening door. It looks like the door's about to open. Another Charger Bug. I knew it, I'm counting on you again, Chaz. All right. So of course, during a trial, we can't capture any of these Pokemon. Not that I really wanted to. So it'll be another rock weakness, of course. As you can see, all these rock slides are really pulling through. As long as we don't miss one, we are at, was it, 90% accuracy with Rock Slide. A lot more power than Rock Tomb had, though. Up they go, down they come. Goodbye, Charger Bug. Now, do we get to fight the Totem yet? Finally, come on. Actually, Prowl's getting some good experience off of this, too. I really like this. The first several trials was all Sonata's work to get through. Then we had to use Dorothy against the Grass-type one in Lush Jungle. And now Prowl has her time to shine against these Pokemon. I knew you could do it, Chaz. And then, of course, the door goes and shuts again. Fool me once, shame on the door. Fool me twice, shame on the security system. Fool me thrice, shame on me, I guess. Here it comes! We're picking up traces of the Totem Pokemon extremely close by! Totem Pokemon incoming! It's right outside the door. I don't think I can handle this. The suspense, the pressure, the intrigue. This is the final security question. In order to open the door, please respond to the following audio quiz. What appears when you hear the following music? A totem Pokemon. Correct, opening door. Huh? The sound, this presence I sense. I like this. Here! Th there it is! The Totem Pokemon! This is your time to shine, Chaz! Vickavold, the Totem Pokemon of the Hokalani Observatory, has appeared! Bring it on. It is a bug type. Bug Electric. The Totem Vickavold. Don't say physical defense. Don't say physical defense. I didn't say physical defense. Let's see what stats have risen. Now, we are five levels above, though. I like that. Wow. Everything went up. These trials are getting a little bit more crazy. However, I think we're probably okay to rock slide. What can you do to me? Wow, you took that. Okay. So you got spark. That does hurt. And that does paralyze. But we have max affection and Pokemon are fresh. Call for your help if you like. I wonder if I had Stealth Rocks up. Would things get hurt as they come in? Charge Bug. Come on, let's break through the Prowl. Oh, no. Hmm. So what concerns me... I remember reading something on the Pokemon Sun and Moon website that... Vickavolt powers up with Charge Bug. I don't know if they would actually have an ability in play that does that. But it is scary to think that it might. So, us, uh, Spark did that much to us. That's, what, 36 damage. A critical would do... What would that be? Another 18. So, 54? We could handle that, but then the Charger Bug could hit us. As I say, Prowl is... Least unexpendable... Rock Slide. Everybody. Alright, we handled that. We're actually faster than Charger Bug. Just like that. Just like that. Prowl, you beautiful beast. And the totem is done. The trial is complete. You earned that level, Prowl girl. Man, that was awesome. I was scared for nothing. Bring it on, she says. Look at that. She's ready for the next trial already. Not bad. You've earned yourself a thermometer, girl. There we go. In fact, you know what? We haven't fed you on screen in quite some time. You've earned yourself a pretty special Poke Bean for that. Let's give her her moment to shine here. Give me a nice little rub on the paws. You love that so much. Grab yourself a special... Whoops. Whoops. Move! 
There we go. Let's give you a nice rainbow bean for that one. There you go. She loves it. Another little scratch on the other pot for good luck. Because what's really nice about this, as I said, completing this trial means that we can bring back injured Pokemon and a Pokemon we've been waiting to use for quite some time. One, 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 one. What do you think, Sophocles? Did I do good? I did good. Mulane, look out! You almost crashed into that meteorite. Sofi! Big Mo! Nice work, Captain! You helped Chaz here through his trial, and your experiment was a success! It seems that your Ping Totem Pokemon 2.0 uses too much electricity. If we can get a little assistance from Charger Bug, we should be able to make some improvements. Here, Chaz, I'll give you this Electrium Z to reward you for beating the Totem Pokemon. I will take that with Aplomb. I don't even know what Aplomb means, but I think it means good. We got ourselves Electrium Z. We can now use Z Thunder Wave. As well as Gigavolt Havoc, if we can learn some sort of electric type offensive move. Like Bolt Switch. We have the TM. Trial is complete. Not bad at all. You watching? It's kind of cool. It looks like a Thunderbolt symbol, I guess, with the, uh, the way you position your hands. I was fine when the power was off. Jeez. Now that you can see me, I feel all nervous. I'm not sure what to say. Thanks, or uh, congratulations. You passed my trial. That I did, sir. That I did. Congratulations on clearing your trial. And you, Sophocles, you did well as captain. I was really nervous. Don't you worry. I'm sure I made the right choice in naming you captain, even if you are my cousin. Usually it's the island Kahuna who appoints the captains. But there are some, er, unusual circumstances here on Ula Ula. So somehow I ended up captain. But you are really great, Chaz. I see. Then let me reward you. So there's not a steel trial? Alright, there's two crystals. This is one of the Z crystals that I collected long ago during my own island challenge to prove my strength and that of my Pokemon. So it seems fitting that it go from me to you. Take it and use it well. And if we're done here, Chaz, could I ask you to do a favor for me? Professor Kakui forgot this. I obtained the Professor's Mask. Okay. If there was ever any doubt as to who the Masked Royal actually was. He said he would be going back to Mally Garden. Could you take it to him? Maybe next time we can battle. Alright, I'll do your dirty work. So the professor is back in Mally Garden again. Find him to give him back that mask, my friend. Zzz. Saying the same thing. Saying the same thing. Okay. What I would like to do at this point is... Well, leave. But let's do a nice big celebration. A nice victory. What would you call it? Celebration, I guess is the proper term, of bringing back some Pokemon. Or rather, one Pokemon. And adding another Pokemon to the team. This is the moment I've been waiting for all week. The completion of that trial. And retrieving some Pokemon so I can finally have a full team. This is it. First of, co uh, first of all, of course, and here I go messing up my words, I'm going to be bringing back our Steeny Cordial. She is back on the team. In addition... Now that we've completed two trials since doing this trade and the Pokemon we traded being knocked out twice, I am adding Ikana to the team. This is it. Look at the layout down below. We finally have a full team, which if you didn't notice, the way I had all the different faces of the moon set up in the uh, Pokemon sections down below, the last one is a full moon, indicating a full team. Pretty cool, eh? So that is it. The team is ready to roll. I'm not sure where I want to go for the training first of all. Because, well, Ikana is level 16. Where would be a good place to train up? I'm probably going to do some, uh, basically, running around the area starting from the beginning. And just to see what kind of Pokemon we can encounter, what kind of levels and stuff. And, you know what? Let's just end off the episode by doing that. We're going to fly back to Melee Melee Island. I think we could probably go to... No, not the uh, uh, graveyard, the cemetery. They have a lot of levitation ghost types there. And we have ground attacks. Although we have Shadow Ball. My nephew did breed this Pokemon to have a lot of good moves. What do you say? I'm going to head back to Howley City. I'm just going to make that our starting point for the grinding montage. We will heal up there in Howley City and save the game just outside the Pokemon Center there. And basically, 
bring this episode to a wrap. And as I say, starting in the next episode, although I promised it for this episode, you will see a grinding montage, most definitely, as I get as much of the team up to speed as possible before tackling the next section on Ula Ula Island. I wonder where we go from there. Well, we actually got to give the thing to Professor, so we'll find out after that. Look, look, a full team on screen. I love it. And one of them's in a quick ball, too. That is Ikana, of course. So let's step out here, save the game, and... You know what? I just realized. I could use... Um, uh, why is there a number? Tell you what. We haven't been to Festival Plaza in a long time. Let's see what this number one means. Hmm. What do you have to say? Maybe my tickets for the day. Why is there a number one on the Festival Plaza? I'm not going to do a mission yet. I'm going to see if there's something inside the castle. We are back here in Westopolis, which I have I renamed my um, thingy. Have there always been balloons up here? What am I doing here? Why is there a number? What does this mean? Hello, my nephew. I'm going to register you as a VIP, finally. Let's do it. Oh, it worked? Why? Every time I tried this off camera, it said registration failed. Well, I'll blame it on the playthrough. And by blame, I mean thank it. So, all right, I have a VIP. Sweet. But with that, I guess we'll just exit the plaza for the time being. I'll probably do this off camera and do some more training for the Pokemon. Wait, I know what we can fill up time with. I just remember there was something else I wanted to do. It is back in the Battle Royal. Is that it here? Let's fly right to the Battle Royal. I think I know where the person who gives the effort ribbon is at in this generation. And currently, based on all the bouncy houses in the fest or Festival Plaza, Prowl is maxed out on stats. In fact, let's take a look at her stats right now. You can see exactly just how maxed out she is. I was focusing on attack and speed for her. Let's check out the super training for Prowl. Look at that. So, speed is not maxed out. Oh, wait. Okay, it shows it blue when they have max IVs. Interesting to note. And you see, attack is maxed out. Speed is, of course, next best stat. Let me see if I am right, because there was somebody who I think in here was talking about your Pokemon having to go for it a little bit harder or something like that. Should be this person over here. Would you look at that? Lichen Rock? It's clearly put out a great deal of effort. Why don't you pin this ribbon on it so that it feels rewarded for all that hard effort? Ribbons are one of my favorite things in Pokemon, and I finally have one in the Alola region to show off to the world. Let's take a look at that right now. The Effort Ribbon. A ribbon awarded for being an exceptionally hard worker. I'll take that. But that is going to wrap up today's episode. I'm just going to step outside of the... No, you know what? Should I save it up in here? It's nice and fancy. Nah, I'll step outside. But we'll save it up, and we are fully healed from the last Pokemon Center, so this is a good place to save the game. I want to say, of course, thank you to everybody out there for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like down below, and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of the episode. And were you rooting on Prowl to win that totem battle? I was. Of course, you saw me doing it, so... But let me know what you thought of the totem battle and what you'd like to see in the future and anything you're expecting and anticipating for the future. Are you approaching me? Hello though. Goodbye. Anyway, I'm heading behind Hariyama. Let's let's just let's just stay there. Look at how amazing this scene is. Perfect. But anyway, if you didn't like the episode though, leave a dislike and let me know what I can do to improve this in the future. Next episode will come back, as I said, will be a grinding montage, trying to get everybody up to speed, and then we'll continue on Ula Ula Island, meeting up with the Professor or the Master Royal in the Cali Garden, and see exactly what happens next story-wise. I have no clue what's gonna happen. You know what? Hasn't it been about a week since we last saw an Ultra Beast? Where have they been at lately? Oh, maybe we'll see something happen in the next episode. But with all that, we are done. Feel free to check out the link in the description to the entire playlist of Pokemon Moon so far. If you missed any episodes, you can check that out and go back and get caught up on everything. How many veterans are going to walk in here? Anyway, also feel free to stay tuned to the outro for some links to some other videos that I have done, plus a link to subscribe. We are currently sitting at about 985 subscribers based on my last check of the channel. Once we hit 1,000, I mentioned a few times along the way, we have some pretty cool giveaways I'll be doing on the channel, as thanks to you folks out there for helping hit that 1,000 subscriber count on the channel. It's going to be pretty cool stuff. I'll talk about it later on, maybe tomorrow's episode, but if not, go back and check some other episodes out. I've shown off what I have to give. I don't want to over 
saturate with all this information because that's about it for today's episode. Once again, I want to say thanks for checking out today's episode. Professor Chaz is now signing off as a karate master passes on by. And I'll catch you next time.